We often get asked what books we recommend that have had the biggest impact on our lives. So in this episode, we thought we'd round up 10 of our most favourite books spanning psychology, psychotherapy, philosophy and spirituality. We offer a summary of each and hope you enjoy reading them yourself sometime soon. Hi, I'm James Davis. And I'm Claire Davis. We're the Midlife Mentors, here to lift the lid on how to achieve health and happiness. The balanced, no-nonsense way. Hello and welcome to another episode of Midlife Mentors with me, James. And me, Claire. You said me, James. <laughs> Did I? It was quite enthusiastic and strung out. Well, you know, I'm in an enthusiastic frame of mind. We've been very busy this morning. We have. Two live workouts to our community. Two live workouts. A, a live Q&A session. Totally and free. a live coaching session on inflammation. All of that has been free, my friends. Um, so if you're not in our Facebook community, the Midlife Mentors Facebook community, you should be. Um, I'll actually, the link is always in the show notes. But you should be because this is where we run free workouts. We run free coffee mornings. We run free Q&As. Like so, so much stuff to help you live the healthiest, happiest life you can at midlife. Um, this is our passion. This is what we do. And this is why we've loved giving out energy this morning. So we're it's very buoyant. It's been incredible. Yeah, it's been amazing. Had loads and loads of people show up for the live uh, workout as well. So we did a hit and a resistance. And this is the way that we help train our clients. You know, this is scientifically backed um, an, an evidence-backed approach to how we should be exercising at midlife. So we gave people a taster of that this morning. We did. What else have we been up to, Claire? We've oh, been, lots of things. Kind of, kind of got a busy week, but heads down, we haven't really been yeah. out and about much, have we? No, no, but we, we are going to get out into the sunshine this afternoon. We have got our new Midlife Health and Happiness quiz live on our website. We have. So you can go to, go to our website, themidlifementors.com, and you will see a link on there to, to take the quiz. It takes about two minutes, you can answer a variety of questions, and it will tell you where you sit on the spectrum of your midlife health and happiness knowledge and give you an actionable report of things you can do to improve it. So we're, we're really pleased with that, and we'd love you to go to ch- check it out. Yeah, you get a little video, a little downloadable video of uh, what action steps you need to take, and a little report. Yeah. So that's awesome. We're getting really, really good response I think that. you can actually go direct to it by going to themidlifementors.com forward slash quiz. Yes. Yes. Nice and easy. But mm. guess what, people? I'll put it in the show notes as well <laughs> so you don't have to think. Um, but also just want to say, if you are an avid listener of this podcast, please, 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 uh, the fee for the show, because we don't run ads to it, we don't run sponsorship, we've had people approach us for sponsorship and we've never taken it, please, please like, share, subscribe um, and review us because it massively, you don't know, like this is all free content, we love doing it. Um, but it does take a long time. Uh, we record it, edit it, put it out there on on our own. Um, and we do that because we want as many of you to ha- have access to non-faddy, mm. authentic advice um, around midlife health and happiness. So um, to give back, we would really, really appreciate you sharing it, liking it, um, reviewing it and subscribing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. I just want to mention as well, actually, if you are in the UK, in about three weeks or so from now, we're at the Orbit Fitness Festival. We are there on Saturday and Sunday delivering live workshops. Mm-hmm. That's up at Hopton Court in Shropshire. Yeah. So we'll be there. Yeah. Uh, I think that is June 9th, 9th <laughs> 10th. I think so. And then... And, 10th and 11th, maybe. And then we do have some very exciting personal news. James and I are actually going to go on holiday. We haven't been on a proper, proper holiday in eight years. Dun, dun, dun. We are going on a summer holiday. Woo. Woohoo! I'm going to get my summer dresses out. I'm so excited. This is going to be great. So, uh, yeah, that's on a personal level. Finally, finally, finally. Listen, if you are out there uh, as a midlifer and you're feeling overwhelmed, anxious, unhealthy and unhappy... 
and want to radically change your life, we'd really love to hear from you uh, because we run something um, and host something called the Midlife Method. Um, it's an integrated evidence-backed approach for the mind, body and soul and it really delivers deep long-term change, weight loss, positivity, purpose. You can see all the amazing, amazing video testimonials. Just had a noisy bike go past our London flat. You can see all the amazing testimonials we've got on our website at themidlifementors.com. Um, and yeah, we'd love to speak to you if this, that is where you are at. Right, Mr. D, we've got a really exciting... Mm, so we get asked all the time, like, all the time what what books do you read what books do you recommend what books are good for this what books are that and we thought actually you know, summer holidays is coming up so this is a good time to read so rather than you know, sitting by the beach with your Jackie Collins or your Jack Reacher <laughs> also good books um, you could read one of these but we, we've got so, literally so many books what we're actually going to do um, is create a think a section on the website called the Midlife Men Mentors Recommend I'm going to start with books um and we'll add these ones up there for sure. So again, we'll put a link in the show notes to, to that on the website. Is that going to be up by the time this goes out in about a few minutes? Yes, really? it will be, Claire. Really? Um, so it, might, only, it might not be, team. We're going only with 10 books this morning to get started. Obviously, there's way more books that. These are probably the 10 books that have had the biggest impact on Claire and I for different reasons. So we just kind of tell you what they are and kind of what we got from them. Yeah, this is exciting. I have to try and remember because some of them I haven't read for a really, really long time. So uh, I hope that I do my ones justice. But actually, we've kind of read. We have actually read all of these. Have you read The Secret? <laughs> I've read The Secret years yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I've just given one of mine away now. But um, yeah, I haven't read them for a long time. But these are books that James and I have both read that we've had a lot of, well, that we have a lot of love for. There is a bike just going up and down, up and down outside. Our I, I don't think it actually picks up on the microphone. <laughs> right, now, so. right, anyway, let's go. Osho. Okay, so this was a time in my life. I actually discovered um, Osho when I was going through my divorce and separation. So I, I was very lost and someone recommended it to me. And I'm so, so glad they did. So um, I recommend his book. He's got a number of books. But I recommend one called Courage, The Joy of Living Dangerously. Um, I'll just start the first words in it off. Don't call it uncertainty, call it wonder. Don't call it insecurity, call it freedom. So uh, the whole approach of the book is about letting go, about um, taking, st stepping into your responsibility, learning to embrace uncertainty. And I just found it such a, a powerful message for me in a turbulent time to actually start framing things in a different perspective and see the opportunities, I think it's, it's a really big help if you can get your head around it to help you move from what we're always talking about, this obstacle to opportunity thinking. So that one. Um, but there, he has a number of books. I also want to give a mention to another book called Living on Your Own I love Terms that one. as well, which is, been, I mean, literally both these books, I'm on about my fourth or fifth copies of them because I've like, you know, given them away to people said, read this, not got them back. But um, Living on Your Own Terms and Courage, the Joy of Living Dangerously, two books by Osho that I'd highly recommend. Next one is yours as well. But oh, we both, we both read, we both read yeah, those. Yeah, so um, a little fact. At the moment, uh, Claire and I are doing a diploma in Jungian psychology, which is it. just amazing. I mean, it's soaking up like five, six hours a week of our time, but we are, are so loving it. And we kind of got to this through our own experience of, of shadow work that I know Claire's going to talk about in a minute. Now, Jung, of course, came up with the whole concept of, of the shadow, and of archetypes. But I recommend as a good starting point, actually, is his biography. It's, it's very accessibly uh, written. It's called Memories, Dreams, Reflection. Um, and the interesting thing about Jung was, you know, we know the two great fathers of, of psychoanalysis, Freud and Jung, were uh, working at the same time, and they were even working together. But Jung then started to take a slightly different path, and he was um, took a very spiritual path. So he was interested in kind of like um, all the myths from around the world, and he became... Uh, became aware of something called the collective unconscious, which is the idea that there's, there's this life energy that is around us all that we can tap into at times and that actually informs our behaviour and it gets filtered through our archetypes. Um, but it's a fascinating, fascinating read. And I think, you know, it, it helps us understand our place in the cosmos, really, and gives us a kind of framework to understand it. So, so that's my next recommendation. Jung, Memories, Dreams, Reflections. It's very it's a very spiritual approach, actually. Mm. I, it surprised me. I mean, I knew about all the archetypes and the dream work that Jung had done, but I didn't realise until I started studying this course just how much he believed in 
this like universal force mm. um it's really really beautiful actually and really resonates with our our way of being doesn't it mm. um so on to the next one actually uh, is rod boothroyd's book so we had rod on our podcast and we called that podcast the shadow self now rod actually works with us individually he's an absolutely amazing man um, and he's written a book called warrior magician lover king now this is actually for men but I really wanted to read it. James had read it and I really wanted to read it because obviously uh, Rod works with me, but also because of the the shadow work podcast had done. So many people came back saying how amazing they found that podcast. And his book is, is really, really incredible because it it really explains how our thoughts and feelings and our way of being in the world are represented with certain archetypes. And the book goes into showing how our emotional wounds in childhood can drive those archetypal energies into the shadow. So he often talks about like the shadow bag, pushing our, our, the, the parts of ourselves that we are ashamed of, that we want to push away, we put them into shadow. And as we get older, unfortunately they come out, those shadows can come out in, in unhelpful ways. And so this book is very much about bringing awareness to those different archetypes, um, I suppose the positive and the negative sides of those archetypes, and how we might begin to heal those. So, you know, he un- describes the unconscious shadow and how it can impact every area of our life, um, reducing our ability to make free choices and very much controlling our behavior, o- often very unconsciously, and preventing us from being our true selves, our true nature. So... It's an, an amazing, amazing book, really enlightening. And he explains all this in a very, very easy to read way. I want to jump in there because I know you're going to go into your next book. But while we're still hanging around with the shadows and Jung, um, something that um, our tutor said the other day really resonated with us, which I think is fascinating. It's um, uh, kind of looking at midlife and why we experience challenges slash crisis slash transformation at midlife it says like the ego has become weary it's done so much hard work through so long of our life that actually gets weary so we actually become it, it relaxes and become more attuned to, to the universal unconscious which is why then we start to question like our place and our values and want to redefine and, and find a new path forward because i thought it's just like a beautiful thing our ego our ego grows weary so we then uh, tune into the unconscious to find a new way forward yeah, absolutely. Really, really helpful. Um, the next book that I wanted to share with you is the alter e- the alter ego effect by Todd Herman. Now it's been a while since I've read this book, but I found it really, really helpful in the sense. In a summary, this is how I found it really helpful. It was like we use our when we're younger, we have our our creativity, our imagination, and so much of the time when we were younger. We played like superheroes, didn't we? You know, so we ha- we we thought we were the queen. We thought we were the king. We thought we were the fight. All of these things that we these again, like an archetype, really, that we used to play with when we were younger, with our imagination and our creativity. And then the world got in the way and said, "No, you're not that person. You're this. You're that." And so, what comes up for us as we get older is things like imposter syndrome, stage fright, emotional baggage, um, and all those. He says all these dubious gifts of adulthood that have suppressed that that side of ourselves that actually believes that we can be the superhero of our own story. So what he kind of talks about is us coming into our heroic self um, and basically using, attempting to face the adversities that we have in our life, the resistance, the challenges, by asking ourselves this one fundamental question, who or what needs to show up now to make success inevitable? So he almost has this whole approach of taking on an alter ego. So it might be the way that you dress, it might be actually putting on a pair of glasses to, to represent that you are now stepping into your alter ego. It might be a certain outfit that you use, it might be a certain piece of jewellery. It might might just be something, a state that you get into before you go and do that, that challenge, that thing that that 
um, always makes you feel frightened. You know, the thing that you really want to do, the thing that sets your soul alight, but actually stepping into an alter ego version of yourself can deliver those qualities that you need in order to move through that challenge. Um, it's a really, really fascinating, I, I mean, I had never heard of anyone kind of putting it in that way before, that we use our imagination and our creativity when we're younger, and then all of a sudden we're, uh, you know, we've got all this baggage as we get older. But actually what we can do is tap into that, that heroic self. And who do we need to be in order to overcome these challenges and make success inevitable and Todd Herman has, has helped so so many people it's like almost scientific there's a lot of science in this as well like scientifically backed um and it gives lots of different examples in the book um but yeah I really really found it helpful to almost separate those two parts of myself there's the part of myself that is in fear has got all this emotional baggage has got all of these traumas and actually to separate those two and go, okay, that now there's my heroic self that I need to step into as my alter ego in order to get things done. Hmm. Yeah, great book. Um, right, so my next book actually is the uh, late, great Alan mm. Watts, the philosopher Alan Watts. Um, now, if you him. haven't ever just like looked for his listen. lectures on, on YouTube and stuff, just his voice is is so calming to listen to. We, we listen uh, to it Annoyingly, often, we? I did see he propped up on an advert the other day, didn't he? And I just thought, oh... It, 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 sacrilege. Used, yeah, sacrilege. I mean, he was like vehemently anti-consumerism. So um, Alan Watts' big thing was looking at, at religion and philosophy, but particularly looking at Eastern philosophy and religion and how that married into kind of Western Western philosophy and religion. But the book I'm recommending by him, again, he's got lots of books, which are re really just kind of collections of his lecture notes, but um, it's The Wisdom of Insecurity. The Wisdom of Insecurity. So it's an exploration of man's quest for psychological security and his efforts to find spiritual and intellectual certainty in religion and philosophy. Um, it actually has a, it's a paradox here because there is no there is no certainty. Um, and at a time when human life seems to be peculiar, insecure and uncertain, we've got to start to embrace that because our insecurity is a result of actually trying to be secure and the, the way we can save ourselves is by actually recognising that. So, again, it's this thing, you know, uh, it's something we talk about a lot with our clients, that our subconscious is, is so wired for this level of perceived certainty. We like to think that so much in our life is certain. Like, we like routine. You know, every day, ideally for us, would play out in the same way, more or less, with the same structures, same things. But it's all an illusion that we create to calm our subconscious. But actually... True freedom comes in actually embracing the, the uncertainty of life because so much of life is uncertain if we really let ourselves actually see it and, and, and see what's really there. So it's a, it's a great, great read, this one. Um, lots of philosophy in there. I, I really loved it. I got, I got through it in one train journey. That was on the way down to me last year, wasn't it? it? Was. On my birthday. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, they, they can be a real gift in the uncertainty when we choose to reframe it, 100%. Um, and the next one is also yours, isn't it? And this, this I have to say, by the way, is one of my favourite books. And it's really nice because a lot of clients have read this book and said, Do you know what, James and Claire? I've read that book after I've been on the Midlife Method. And the way that you teach us to um, make incremental changes in our life really reminded me. What you say about habits really reminded me of um, this book. Yes, yeah, so this is a classic one in the self-help world. Atomic Habits by James Clear. So um, they say it's an easy and proven way to build good habits and break good ones, break bad ones. Sorry, um, and it all, it's all based about that thing. People always think you need to make big changes to get big changes in life, and this is what we hammer home on our program. It's not about making those big sweeping wholesale changes. It's about lots of small incremental changes in lots of places actually deliver massive shift without it feeling too challenging to you, too overwhelming for you. Uh, and this book kind of breaks down the habit part of that, making minuscule changes to grow into life-altering outcomes. And simple life hacks like like habit stacking, two-minute roll, getting into the Goldilocks zone. And he's done a lot of like research and study around it as well. So I recommend that. If you're interested in looking at your habits in particular, this is a great book to start with. Yeah, Atomic Habits, James Yeah, great, Clear. great book. I love that. Um, now, the next book is one of mine. James has read this as well. But I've, I've been banging on about this for a while because I've reread it recently. And it had, a, it had a very different impact on me again. I mean, I must have read it years and years and years ago. And that is uh, The Chimp Paradox by Professor Steve Peters. 
Oh my goodness. So anyone that has the uh, constant inner critic, the self-saboteur, this is a really, really powerful book because um, he, he talks about the chimp paradox, the fact that we need it. This is the paradox, the fact that we need it and actually it keeps us alive. It is a fundamental part of who we are as as humans and it is necessary. Um, but the paradox is it also scuppers our progress and our success and our self-love and our self-worth. So the chimp is basically um, the the oldest part of our brain, you know. It's the part that is very emotional, reactive, doesn't have a clear head, doesn't think, um, you know, it doesn't think rationally at all. It's very, very linear in its thinking. Um, and it will be the part of your brain that is, when you go to do something, that's the part of yourself that will go, danger, danger, fear, fear. Um, and tell you everything, over catastrophize, tell you everything that's going to go wrong um, with this decision you might be making. Um, and that is the chimp part of your brain. But actually, this book really helps unpick why it's there, why it's important, why it's actually your friend, how it helps you, but how you can start becoming friends with it so that the human part he says there's a human part of our brain the human part of our brain is like that higher self right the part of ourselves um that has perspective that isn't doesn't over dramatize things that is based in kind of like reality thinking and then there's the computer so it's the chimp the human and the computer and the computer is all your beliefs and how you can work with these three different parts of yourself to really react to certain things in your life differently to lower your stress to lower your fear to really really step into the truth of who you are with without being held back constantly by this chimp nattering in your head going crazy so it brings a level of acceptance and peace in a way that I haven't found in any other book because I love the science. He's, he's a, he's a, the scientific approach is really, really important to me because I like to understand that I'm not alone. This is actually just something that is hardwired into every single person's brain, but there is a way to work with it. You're never going to get rid of it, but there's a way to work with it so it stops holding you back. It's one of my favourite books. Um and the next one is The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday, another one of just the best books. Because talking about, um, it's, I suppose it's a little bit in, in the way that James has been talking about uncertainty and certainty. Um, when obstacles come up for us, when life challenges us, we obviously, our natural instinct from the chimp actually, is to say it's all bad. And the obstacle is, is just the worst thing that could ever happen to us. But the heroes in life, every single hero in life, every great man and every great woman, they didn't have exceptional luck, talent or experience. What they had was a single thing and that was what they had the same thing in common. What stood in their way then becomes the way. So it's a bit like the Hero's Journey podcast we did that went out live last week. It's like... The adversity is what makes us. It is the way forward into a more rounded, peaceful, purposeful, passionate version of ourselves. So it's about managing those perceptions of what we think are our obstacles, recognizing when we can change things, which is most of the time, and then directing our actions and learning to turn those obstacles into our advantage as much as possible. And it's, it's called, it's called ob the obstacle is the way, the ancient art of turning adversity into advantage. And it is called the ancient art because of all of those people. If you look back over the history of time, of all the great books, of all the great myths, they had adversity and obstacles in order to become the hero of their own story. I love this book. Hmm. Fantastic. Uh, next one is also um, looking at that inner critic part. So this is by Barry Michaels and Phil Stutz. You might have seen the documentary Stutz on Netflix, um, where he's with Jonah Hill. So their first book was called The Tools, but their second book, Coming Alive, I actually think is, is probably a little bit more accessible. I'm reading through it at the moment. It explains this thing, um, part X. Part X is the part of us that will, uh, it's the inner critic, will attempt to self-sabotage, you know, undermine us. I mean, again, like with the chimp, we have to learn how to man manage it. 
And what I love about these books, you know, uh, things like The Chimp Paradox, um, The Tools, Part X, they're giving us a framework to understand what's happening for us internally. And once we have that framework, we can understand rather than just going, oh, don't know what happened there. I just like saw the red mist and got a bit tasty. You can actually go, okay, well, what was happening there was Part X felt threatened by this. So then my chimp got out of his cage and started screaming. So next time what I'm going to do is something different. So um, this is a very hands-on book. It's a, lo- a load of tools coming alive by Stutz and Michaels. Mm. And the last one is mine. I mentioned this right at the beginning. So I didn't know whether James has actually read this. But The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. Um, I, I wanted to put this. I thought, shall I put this book? Because it's all, all these other ones have been quite psychologically based, okay? Well, actually, Osho, not so much, but... Um, and obviously Alan Watts. But for me, The Secret, I think it came out in 2004, maybe 2004. I had read self-help books before. This one was life-changing in the sense that, to me, I had always experienced that the, the thoughts that I have, I'd noticed growing up that the thoughts I had then often manifested into reality. Um, and the more I thought on something and the more I focused on something, the more I created it in my external world. And this book gave me a, like, a beautiful, spiritual, connected understanding of why that is. And that we are all energy and we are all connected and everything is energy in this world. And that your thoughts are energy. So the thoughts you have attract to you similar things so it's like magnets they either attract or repel right so if we're having negative thoughts then they're going to show up that's actually going to manifest in our life this is how powerful our thoughts are because our thoughts actually are energy what we think about internally is what manifests externally and then if we're thinking positive thoughts And we're focusing on something and we're visualizing something. So this is where visualization really, really comes into its power. If we're visualizing something as if it's already done, we begin to act as that person. We begin to behave and have habits as that person. And then all of that begins to attract to us that which we seek. And it's it's such a powerful book. Um, I have reread it recently and it just gives a level of acceptance and peace. It, it doesn't, yeah, it gave me a level of acceptance and peace of, okay, I'm in control here. I am responsible. Things aren't happening to me. I am the creator. I am the creator. A very powerful statement, by the way. I am the creator of my reality. And for some people, that is very, very scary. Some, it's very, very liberating. Because everything in your life has somehow, on some level, been created by some thoughts that you have. And it's your power, within your power, to change that if you take on that responsibility. It's very triggering for some people to hear that. But if you take on that responsibility, you can change your life for the better. So that had to be in my list. Mm. Had to be in my list. So, oh my goodness, we would love, I've loved talking about that. Yeah, that I was have. a really, I mean, really great... Only scraping the surface of, of the books that, that we read our and lives. work from and change our lives. But you can see there, like, we're spanning philosophy, psychotherapy, psychology. Spirituality. Uh, and a bit of spirituality in there as well. Mm. So I'd, love, I'd love you, actually, to, to ping us, like, what, what books do you love? What books have changed your life? We really do want to know Send this, that, by the way. Team at themidlifementors.com. We'd love to know that. Team at the Midlife Mentors. Team at the Midlife Mentors. Com. That's where you can contact us. Or if you have any questions at all, actually, or if you'd just like to you know, reach out and ask like, how you could work with us, then yeah, yeah that's also, also a way. Also, 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 if you would like to meet us in person, we have an amazing, honestly, so our business, um, our legacy business is called 38 Degrees North. Go and check us out. 38 Degrees North, all written. 38 Degrees North. Com. So that's all written out. Go and check us out because. Um, we still run retreats after when COVID hit, we actually, obviously we couldn't do our travel business. We run uh, retreats in Ibiza and Marbella in Spain and in the UK. And we've got some retreats coming up. Uh, we've got one coming up in, at Six Senses, the luxury five-star hotel in Ibiza, five-star, um, 
Six Senses, absolutely incredible, beautiful resort. We've got one going on there in October. That's on our website. And we are just in the throes of creating one and launching one here in the UK. So if you are interested in either of those, if you've got questions, you can go on to see the Six Senses one in Ibiza. If you've got questions about the UK one or are interested and want to be the first to know when those dates go live, because I really feel like the UK one, it's a two-nighter, it's going to go like that, like hotcakes. So if you want to be on the list of when that launches and you want to meet us in person and, and be with us and learn all of this stuff about how to make your midlife phenomenal in every single way, um, then just reach out to us. So email us, team at themidlifementors.com. If you want to find out about our retreats business and how awesome it is and how we've been in every international press going, how we've won awards for our approach and you can be in on it, go to 38degreesnorthallwritten.com. Um, we are sending you lots and lots of love. Yeah, till next time. See you later. Enjoy your reading. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Midlife Mentors with Claire and James Davis. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line at info at themidlifementors.com with any questions or topic suggestions. And make sure you join us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can find us under The Midlife Mentors. Yeah.